I'm Andrew Wilson from ICL and I'm here with my colleague Steve Chapman. Um, today we're going to talk about peat reduced grow media and the various ingredients on offer. I'm going to talk about the properties and then Steve's going to give you some tips on their practical uses. Now when we're looking at peat reduction, there's not one raw material that can replace peat completely and we need to look at a range of raw materials that we can blend to, to achieve a consistent product. Now one of the materials is Koya, it's a byproduct of the coconut industry. Um, it's been widely used since the 1980s and it's becoming more popular. It's a very consistent product. The other product is, is bark. Um, various grades are available. Um, it's a byproduct of the timber industry. Um, it's a high wood content, so it needs to be carefully aged. Uh, and there's different grades available for different mixes. The third product is wood fibre, which is a very popular product these days. It's a very light material. And it's produced by an industrial process, so it's a very consistent product and it's becoming more and more popular. The other product I haven't mentioned is green compost. Now this is widely available and is typically composted at municipal depots and places like that. However, there are some issues with it. Um, potentially, it, it's, a, it's a very sustainable product, has high conductivity, lots of nutrients, but it's very heavy. And it's expensive to transport um, and it potentially has contamination so it's not suitable for professional use. Now looking at the pros and cons of using Koya, on, on the pro side it's a very light material and it's, it's imported compressed. It's then decompressed from the blocks um, and it's very efficient in transport. The physical properties are very similar to a medium peat except the AFP is slightly higher. It's a very consistent physical product and it flows very well into small cells, so it's particularly useful for propagation. On the con side, it's an expensive product, obviously it's imported and it has a long lead time in its supply, so you need to be very organised in your ordering and stockpiling of the material, else you'll run short. Now the most important thing to consider is that it needs to be thoroughly washed before use, so there's extensive quality control with the product because it's grown in the coastal areas of Sri Lanka and southern India and there's a lot of sodium and chloride in the product before it's washed. And looking at bark and the pros and cons, it's an environmentally friendly product, a byproduct of the timber industry. There's FSC sources available, which is Forestry Stewardship Council, which shows the sustainability of it. And there's different qualities of material. The best bark is pine bark, but there's also spruce and larch bark available. It's typically added to growing media to increase the AFP, um, which can be important for reducing slumping for outdoor crops and things like that. The physical properties and texture of bark is close to the colour of peat and, and is favoured by consumers. On the con side, it's biologically active, so it needs to be aged to reduce the risk of nitrogen drawdown. It's also an increasingly expensive product due to the competitive uses of the product particularly for biomass energy. Bark has lower water holding capacity than peat, for example, and can lead to higher irrigation need. The availability of bark in peak season is an issue and the demand is very high for the product. Now looking at wood fibre and the pros and cons, on the pro side, it's a consistent product produced by a mechanical process and it's very light and makes transport costs lower, so it's a very efficient product to use. There's different types of wood fibre. This is a, an undyed material. There's also dyed material and they have a range of properties and they can vary. Now wood fibre has a higher AFP so it can improve rooting. Now on the con side, a consequence of the high AFP is that when used at high concentrations it can slump and this can be important on longer term crops. Another consequence is that the high AFP is that more irrigation will re be required and this can have labour and cost implications. Another thing to consider is the leaching of nitrogen and the potential lockup due to its high carbon to nitrogen ratio. But this will obviously vary between different wood fibres. Green compost, the pros and the cons. On the pro side, it's a widely available product, it's biologically active and it has a good buffering of nutrients. On the con side, green compost is a very heavy product, expensive to transport. It's a very inconsistent product and varies with the seasons. 
It can also be dangerous to plants because it can contain pesticides from lawn care as well as heavy metals. So it's not generally used in professional horticulture and is only more suitable for consumer growing. Now I spoke generally about the raw materials. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Steve Chapman and he's going to tell you how ICL use our Levington Advanced raw materials to give you a consistent quality grown media product. So starting with Levington Advanced Goya, as you can see, it is a very consistent product and has great flowability. This makes it great for incorporating into small cells in propagation and is very much like peat with its look and its feel. With its versatile properties, Levington Advanced Coir is a key ingredient in peat-free growing media. With Levington Advanced Bark, this is a pure pine bark and is 0-8mm. It has really good flowability and helps fill especially small pots where you're trying to lower water holding capacity but increase AFP. If you compare this with the 5-12mm to pine bark, this will increase the AFP even more, but is also good at using it in overwintered crops. Both of the pine barks are great at suppressing rootborne diseases and it's a really good idea to incorporate them into your growing media when growing crops such as cyclamen. This is our new Fibre Grow Advanced wood fibre. It is sustainably sourced and produced at our factory in Scotland. Fibre Grow Advanced is produced using ICL's unique thermomechanical process. Typically wood fibre has a high AFP and can be prone to slumping. Fibre Grow Advance has been especially developed to have a good balance between AFP and its water holding capacity. It has been proven to help reduce slumping whilst also increasing nutrient buffering. So how do we put the Levington Advance raw materials together to make a great mix? Well if we're looking at peat reduction, uh, typically with container nursery stock, we would add wood fibre. And we've got a lot of experience with that now. Absolutely. We've all been comfortable at about 30% wood fibre, but we're consistently seeing that upping wood fibre to more than that can still give consistent results. And we find the wood fibre wets up really well, but it really encourages rooting, and it makes a nice light mix, which is economic to deliver and supply to customers. So looking at peat-free growing media, our Levington Advanced Sustain mixes, they're incorporating our Levington Advanced raw materials such as coir, bark and fibre grow advance and we use these in different proportions to achieve the different water holding and air fill porosities required for different crops. So as Andrew was mentioning this is a nursery stock mix where we've clearly added more barks and wood fibre to create a more open structure and something that maybe will overwinter better. Comparing it to this mix, this mix is much finer and will flow into cells much easier, so we're much more suited to bedding and propagation. So we've looked at the physical properties of the growing medias. If you now go to the, the nurture zone, you can learn more about the nutrition and the water properties of peat-free growing.